Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up, Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, and the Pittsburgh Steelers face off with Jameis Winston in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. It's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us-against-the-world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. So out come the Bucs now for their first drive. They're led out by a man raised in Alabama, went to Florida State. It's their quarterback, Jameis Winston. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team won, managed the game effectively, led them to victory. He's doing all the right things. And they'll go on the ground. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. And a peek now at the offense for Tampa Bay. And Deshaun Jackson is the guy that your eyes naturally gravitate towards because he's a big play waiting to happen. In his career, he usually averages about 20 yards a catch. Last season in 2017, closer to 13 yards per catch. Look for him to be recommitted to getting back downfield and catching the long ball. Now a second down throw for Winston. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. It's picked by the linebacker, T.J. Watt. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Let's take a closer look at the start that the Steelers have had this season as they come back onto the field here. We talked about it. They're 0-1-1. The tie to the Browns, the loss to KC, and now all of a sudden you got the Ravens coming in, and that looks like a game now that they can't really afford to lose. And they don't want to look ahead. They need to focus on the Ravens and find a way to get a win. But if they do after that, they're home for Atlanta, and then they're at Cincinnati, who's jumped into the fray this year as a contender in the AFC North. So plenty of work for the Steelers to do. Too early to give up on them. The pedigree's too good, offense. but it's not too early to focus in on Baltimore. They need this win. And the AFC North looking a lot more intriguing than most thought a couple of weeks ago. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. Now Roethlisberger. This is caught by Antonio Brown. The numbers for Brown from a week ago. Nine catches, 67 yards. And that was a nice job there pulling that one in. Now, this is an offense that will certainly spread the ball around a bit. And this is a guy that defenses had better focus on. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second row. Here's Connor. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And he gets him a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. For James Connor, week one, he was great. 135 yards a pair of scores. Week two, didn't approach those kinds of numbers. Not that you would hold him to that level again. No, not at all. And the hard part for him, because he only had 17 yards on the ground, he did score one right there. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Jason Pierre-Paul. 
in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Well, it's up to how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So the opening drive stalls out, but the field goal does get him the first points of the night. And three points, not to be underestimated. How about this, right? You're on the road, you're under the lights, national television audience. This is not a dress rehearsal, partner. This is for real, and a pretty nice opening statement. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after offense. that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. That's going to set him back five yards. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Jameis to throw it. Incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And now it's second down. We take a glance now at the starters on the defensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh. Against the pass, they're toward the middle of the league, number 15 in the NFL. Yeah, this has been a good defense, but they're going to have to really prove it in this one because guess what? They're facing the number one passing offense in the NFL. It's definitely a prove-it day for them. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Ready, go. White 25. Boys, up. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, defense. And the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off Still the ball quickly, down. but the I'm ball's going, right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. So the penalty now moves it up. It's second and ten. Ready. Move away. Boys, up. Boys, up. To throw is Winston. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. From the gun, Winston. He sets to fire deep. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. 
Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it. But in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. As a defender, I always found the slant route extremely difficult to cover unless you're able to jump on top of it early because once he gets his hands on the ball, he's at full speed going away from you. It's just, it all happens in the blink of an eye, doesn't it? It really does. The timing is so important. That ball's got to be out of the hands of the quarterback and to the receiver like that. And if it is, you often get a very successful play. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and the lead grows to 10 0. Boswell on now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Tampa Bay comes back out onto the field here, and Charles, we revisit a topic you and I had a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at Tampa Bay's first three games. And we kind of said, hey, if they get out of there with one win, that's a success. Well, they're 2-0 and right now. Yeah, we did say that, didn't we? But what did we actually think? I'll ask you first. 0-3. That's what I thought. Definitely, I thought it was going to be an 0-3 start. And then Winston would come back, and they'd have to start over again. Now, instead, they're 2 to the good. Possibility of being 3-0. and I don't know that you make a change with Ryan Fitzpatrick right now. I think he's taken over that team. And as hot as he's been, Jameis Winston will have to earn his way back. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Ready? Black 22. Black. 
They go play action here on first down. And this is going to be incomplete. The tight end Cameron Brait was the target. And it's second down. Well, taking a glance across the NFL through two weeks of the season, you've got quite a few teams that are winless, which obviously makes sense two weeks in. But the John Gruden era, not off to the best start there at 0-2, Charles. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, Brand. I mean, the Raiders, I believe this is the 15th time in franchise history they started 0-2. None of the previous 14 times have they started going to and made the playoffs. Mm. So the John Gruden era, not off to the start they're looking for, but I do think they're going to improve during the year. I wouldn't rule them out just yet. They might make a little bit of history with their franchise. I think the Steelers and the Browns at 0-1-1, it's an odd record, but the Browns actually feel halfway decent about it if they can fix their kicking. The Steelers, utterly disappointed they're 0-1-1. Yeah, but the Browns, you're right, they could very easily be 2-0 right now. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. The first carry here for Jaquez Rogers. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Stephon Tua came out at Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. Second down. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Ready. Watch with a five. Play fake. Winston. Going for the deep. This is caught inside the 15. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. That one goes for 36 yards. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. First time into the red zone for the Buccaneers. It's first and 10 from the 12. They go play action. Winston. And that is caught by Jackson for a Buccaneer touchdown. Deshaun Jackson, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get over. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Extra point good by Catanzaro, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. On the return, it's Juju Smith-Schuster. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now out come the Steelers. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. 
Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up the touchdown. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Evans. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. So a minute 55 to go in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. the interception. Winston. His throw incomplete. All right, need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to knock that one away. Here's Winston. Trying to get it to Jackson, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 19. And a big turnover there his guys will get the football back. Well, let's take a step away from this game for a second. Talk about teams that are undefeated through two weeks in the NFL season. Miami, Denver, Cincinnati, Tampa Bay. How about those surprises all being 2-0 right now? Yeah, we, you know, the Jaguars, the Chiefs, and the Rams are all 2-0. Not a major surprise. You're exactly right because they have one common characteristic, those teams you mentioned, Miami, Denver, Cincinnati, and Tampa. None of them made the playoffs last year. And what's the one thing we do know about the NFL? Roughly blitz coming and down he goes. Vinny Curry. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Curry, a cap casualty of the Eagles in the offseason. Tampa Bay happy to have it. More than happy. Ecstatic would be more like it. They needed edge rushers. They added Vinny Curry first. And don't get fooled by the sack numbers, which are below double digits. This guy creates pressure on the quarterback on just about every snap. He started all 19 games for the Eagles in their run to the title. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Man open left side is Brown. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And it's third and short. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. He can run for it, and he will. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. Now you get a look at Roethlisberger down on the ground, and you hope it's not the knee. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Now it's the backup Rudolph. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Rudolph looking to throw it. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And this is caught inside the five. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Watch 
They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Flushed out right. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. Nowhere to go with it. Incomplete. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Boswell's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they were losers in that one to the visiting L.A. Chargers. Keenan Allen, well over 100 yards receiving with three touchdown catches. Finally, we head to the shores of Lake Erie. See what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. And they were winners in their ball game as they were able to handle the visiting New York Jets. Tyrod Taylor, two touchdown passes as his guys remain unbeaten. In the game you've been watching, it was Ben Roethlisberger who led the way offensively in the first half. His guys have the lead as we get you back over to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa and rejoin Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme. Get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in. And well, this is caught at the 20. And he gets this down deep into Tampa Bay territory. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. In our pregame meeting, all they talked about was keeping him hemmed in and wanting him to make his throws from the pocket because they knew he was pretty dangerous if he got outside. And he just showed it right there. Pretty good arm, too. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. 
Connor. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21 yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right, you look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. has taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. But it'll be able to re and it's caught. It's Brown. Touchdown Steelers. Antonio Brown, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. So they're able to throw it in for the two-point conversion. Sometimes that can be a risky play, but they got it. Yeah, you always have to be careful here because if you do get it intercepted, it's returned by the defense, that's two points for them. But he identified an open target and put it right on him. Boswell on now to kick this one away. Now it's Adam Humphreys on the return. He's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, with that incompletion... You've got to talk about the ties that we've seen in weeks one and two. Everyone was talking about the Steelers-Browns week one, Charles, but week two we hey, saw another, hey. the game that you had, Vikings and Packers. Yeah, and do you know something? They tied at 29. You know, it's the first time teams have tied with a score of 29-29 in NFL history, so another little oddity that you throw in there. But I think the common characteristic between the Vikings-Packers and the Steelers-Browns from week one, kicking. The kicking game got both games and really affected in a big way. The Browns could have won, had a field goal blocked. The Vikings could have won, their field goal kicker missed three. And Mason Crosby, the Packers, made one. But the Vikings had called timeout, he had to do it again, and he missed. So there you go, two ties in the first two weeks. First time that's happened since 1971. 
He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Jameis now on first down. The right side caught by O.J. Howard. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. Winston now to throw on first down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. The former Buckeye, Cameron Hayward. And it'll be a second and long. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Ready. Blue Working out of the gun. Winston. Out to the left there and complete to Howard. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And that is incomplete. You gotta give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. All right, they're gonna try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Ready, black, 22, black. Gotta try it here, he's back to throw. He's got Evans. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Are we really in the second half here? And this is the first time we've seen Jameis Winston connect with Mike Evans? Yeah, you know that they miss that in the first half. Up until this point, they've really missed it, haven't they? I think that's a big reason why they're down on the scoreboard right now. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now they try the right side here. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Do you think after that last run, they're thinking to themselves, we had to wait all day to play this night game, and we're still not able to run the ball the way we want to? Yeah, this defense, they've risen to the challenge all evening long. Second down, Winston. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there because there's a sigh of relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. This is caught. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. O.J. Howard, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game.
big score. First step in their attempt to climb back into this game. Yes, but still some work to do as they get within a score here. Point after now from Catanzaro. Extra point up and good by Catanzaro. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This will be taken very short. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays, they're going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first down, and the goal... End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. But it's brought in by Washington. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. That one goes for 24 yards. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. It's counter. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. Some extra space following the display of power down just inside the 45. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit four of seven. Here it's third and three. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. And he took the contact as he was throwing it. And the ball drops incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And before this fourth and three play, we're going to get whistles and a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 
Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Back to throw. And he finds Howard complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Two huge plays there down the stretch. The sack on second down. Now they force the incompletion. That's going to lead to a do-or-die fourth down. And they look like they've got the confidence right now that no matter what gets thrown against them, whatever play gets run, they have the ability to shut it down. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hilton. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Okay, partner. No surprise to you, I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Hurry up, let's go! They go down to a knee and a sigh of relief as they are into the win column for the first time this year. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys who's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for Pittsburgh, the preparation pays off as they pick up their first win on the year. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for the Buccaneers, they suffer defeat for the first time as they drop to 2-1. and one. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.